Salute to the next nation CPA the franchise here. You ever Google your name and see your personal information exposed all over public listing sites? You ever get tired of getting those spam calls to your cell phone all day long? I must get at least two to three per day. These data brokers are making a fortune selling your personal information to robocallers, spammers, and people that are just looking for your personal information, like where you live, your phone number, date of birth, and so on. That's why I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura submits opt-out requests on your behalf to data brokers. These brokers who are exposing your personal information are legally required to remove your information if requested. However, they make the process super difficult to do. But that's why I rock with Aura because they handle the whole process for you. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from the online threats that you can't see. It's really easy to set up so you don't need to download multiple apps for things like parental controls, VPN, identity theft insurance, password management. It's super easy to set up and it's all available at an affordable price. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so that you can have the peace of mind and tend to the more important things in your life. So if you want to stop data brokers from exposing your personal information online, go check out today's sponsor right now. Go to Aura.com slash KnicksFanTV for a two-week free trial to see if your personal information has been exposed. How about it, guys from ESPN? Had a lot of optimism for these Knicks, man. Here was, here was Zach Lowe and Brian Windhorse on, on what this Knicks season could look like. Here it is. The Knicks. Okay, the Knicks. They won a playoff series. They demolished the Cleveland Cavaliers. They competed hard against Miami in the second round. If I'm a Knicks optimist, Philadelphia, they're a mess. Milwaukee, facing some pressure. Boston, Got to reinvent themselves around Chris Stapps, Porzingis, some injury-prone guys. Miami still doesn't have Damian Lillard. They got Miami. They got hashtag heat culture, Jimmy Butler, and Bama. They don't have Damian Lillard yet. Why not? Why can't we wake up in May and the New York Knicks are in the conference finals? Maybe not the finals. That might be a little much. But why not the conference finals? This is a good, deep team, well-coached. They're going to grind defensively. The big obstacle for the playoffs, though, assuming they get back, is Julius Randle's got to play better. He's 34% from the field career for the playoffs. He's been twice. He shot poorly both times. That's the next level for him and them. But title, finals, that's a little much. They're I'm in, sorry. They got, they got picks galore for, those, for are, those are the breaks. transactions. Like but why not conference finals? The, why not? Those are the breaks, Zach. Do they need to be pumped, Brian, or are the Knicks going to the conference finals? I don't know about the conference finals, but Zach's going. point is... <laughs> I just want us to clip could. off that thing where Zach says he's not beloved. I want to keep that around. We could use that again. Mm. Let's, let's keep an eye on that. Um, I, I think the thing about the Knicks that you want to be optimistic about is they're upwardly mobile. Regardless of whether they are in the third seed or fourth seed or fifth seed like they were last year, the draft picks that they have at their disposal and the contracts that they have on their roster, in my view, they don't have a bad contract on their roster. All of their contracts that they have signed under Leon Rose, maybe with the exception of Evan Fournier, but that's now at the end, so it becomes tradable. All of those contracts are movable. They can play with this team and be competitive in the East, or when a star player becomes available, they can pivot and go after it. In fact, I think one of the challenges for the Knicks off the court over the next 12 to 18 months is to control themselves and wait for the player that they want to go all in for. They showed great discipline in not going crazy on the bidding for Donovan Mitchell last year. They ended up beating Donovan Mitchell in the playoffs. So this is what I think about the Knicks. They have the ability to greatly improve this team. And I know this has been said for the last decade. And I can't, uh, you know, make up or, or cover up all the times when they could have gotten star players and haven't gotten the deal done. That is true. But it is possible for them to be a good team and be, trade themselves into a great team. All right. So that was... Uh... Zach Lowe and Brian Winhurst, courtesy of ESPN's Get, uh, NBA Today. And Al, you know, my, my reaction to what they had to say, Lowe saying that why not the Knicks to the Eastern Conference Finals, Winhurst saying that they're, they're built in a, in, a, in a solid way right now to compete and to get the piece that hopefully can, can change the franchise's hopes. My reaction is we've heard it before right here on KFTV, right? 
So, you know, some people like to think ESPN's ice is colder and then they take more stock into what those guys say. But that this is nothing that you haven't heard on this platform many a times, especially when it comes to the Knicks potential this season because of those question marks that Zach Lowe pointed out. Yes, the Celtics have to get their respect, but a, a smart subtraction, a Chris Stops addition, how do they look? How do they look when the onus is, is now fully on Tatum and Brown to, to lead that team? How do they look without their defensive anchor in a Marcus Smart, their locker room soul, heart and soul in a Marcus Smart? We'll see. We'll see. Philadelphia on fire right now. No Harden. How does that impact things? I think they're going to take a big hit. Miami, they don't get Dame. I don't think they're as strong as they were last year. Anything can happen. You can't count them out. But I say that to say, Outside of Milwaukee, sure, yes, you still want to put the Celtics up there. We'll see what happens with Cleveland. I give the Knicks a shot. Now, there's question marks that have to be answered. Is ha- Number one, can Brunson maintain or exceed where he, where he finished last year? Can he be a true all-star for them? Because he's going to need to be. What happens when the Knicks, when the, when the league... Sends that extra attention to him. The full tape is out on him. Is he is he going to maintain? How does Randall play? How does Randall play in particular in the playoffs? How does Quick play in the playoffs? Where, where will RJ be in the playoffs? There's a lot of variables, right? It's not just automatic just because they made it that far last year that they're guaranteed to get there. They still have to go out there and execute and play very well. And their big three plus Quick off the bench are going to be very important. And then lastly is going to be how do they fill that backup four spot? Will, will Josh Hart be able to last there? Will they maintain their rebound and edge? Will they be able to help rim protect, especially off of the bench? Will that lack of size help them in certain areas? Or will they hurt them to a greater degree? Those are some of my questions that I have as it relates to getting that team to get over the hump. If Brunson is there, Randall has to be there. And if they are, I, I, I don't see why not, given the, the question marks around, around the East. CP pointed out, all the right categories for this team moving forward, whether it's Brunson taking on that next level, right, for the double teams, whether it's Randall showing up in the playoffs, quickly showing up in the playoffs, all, all that is true. All that is accurate. And you said it. Like, we've, we've talked about this ad nauseum for for how months at this point, right? We go up and down the East. We even go further than that. We talk about the Hawks, the Pacers, everybody else, and where they all stack up and where the Knicks are. You know, the question I have moving forward with this team is that will we be too small? going against opponents, all right? That's the big thing because you got Dante DiVincenzo now, right? I know Obi didn't play that much, but still, you're adding another guard to the rotation. We're talking about minutes that are going to get a little bit more jumbled. Where are your closing rotations going to be? Are these guys going to have enough continuity on a nightly basis? Because as we saw this past season with Tom Thibodeau, right? Until we got Josh Hart, you know what that closing lineup was. It was Brunson, Grimes, RJ, or quickly for RJ, with Randall, Mitch Hartenstein. You already knew what it was. Once you brought Josh Hart in here, things changed. And we saw that even through the playoffs, right? Whether it's Hart being the starter, Grimes playing in game five and having that stop against Jimmy Butler. The, that's the big question for me. It's what will this team look like in the closing minutes? Because that's going to be a lot of reading and having a pulse on this team, right? Will Tom Thibodeau have the pulse of this team to know who to close with on a nightly basis? Will it be Dante DiVincenzo's night? If he, is he struggling? Do you still go with Dante? Is Grimes is struggling? Do you still go out there with him? Do you still rely on him? Josh Hart, maybe he's not shooting well. He doesn't have that same 50% on low volume that he did when he came to the Knicks. Are you going to trust him in a night? Maybe, maybe when you need more offense. Is there going to be more offense? That's even, that's even a better question. Like yeah. Offense was awesome last year, even though it was heavy isolation. But can it take another step forward? Can it be a little bit more creative? How do you get other guys involved? Because the Knicks going to have an X on their back. That, that's just the fact this season. They made noise last year. Jalen Brunson's on the rise. They made it to the second round. New York, big market. I mean, look, you have Miles Turner going out there and, and parading for the Knicks at this point. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're talking about Theo Pinson. But what is the rest of the league looking at? They know how big New York is. We know how it was two seasons ago. Everyone coming in here and saying bing bong after they defeated yeah. the Knicks. There's always an X on the Knicks back. Yeah. So – is the team going to be ready to deal with that type of pressure? And is Tom Thibodeau going to be ready to have the pulse of the team going into late game execution? Because it's going to change. It's not going to be the same closing five. 
Shout out to the Rhyme Animal, Chuck. The $50 super chat from the OG, man. Salute to Chuck. He says, salutes. We trust no pundit predictions on our New York Knickerbockers. Can't <laughs> trust it. Salute to the Rhyme Animal, Chuck D, man. Just can't trust it because he trusts the number one show for the fans, by the fans, Knicks Fan TV. So we appreciate Chuck. Uh, call us up, man, 657-383-1509 or hit us up on the Knicks Fan TV Discord. Chris, we see you on the Knicks Fan TV Discord. Hang tight. We're going to get to your call after uh this quick take and you know on zach lowe's comments in terms of the question marks in the east and in terms of windhorse comments in terms of how the knicks future prospects looks setting them up well for for a a big star or and and to compete at the same time i think the dame trade speaks on both of those points because as I said, if, if Dame doesn't go to Miami, that severely impacts the Heat and their chances. I think that really severely impacts the Heat. 